Okay, good day class. Uh, today marks our first session of your uh, immunology and serology. And I am your professor for this session. I am Alfredo Ine Jr. You can uh, call me Sir Red. And my task for this session is to cover the first part uh, of your immunology serology, which is the basic principles of your uh, immunology. And uh, this uh, video lecture is very short, so please bear with me. You can also catch me up uh, using your reference book. Uh, that's your uh, Stevens and Thurja. Okay, let's start. Okay, so as we uh, cover this one already in your human anatomy, that we have a lot of uh, uh, systems in our human body. That includes your digestive system, skeletal system, you have your muscular system, and of course, we have your immune system. And then uh, the main function of your immune system is, of course, to protect us from the foreign uh, materials that are found in the environment. And that includes and not limited to infectious agents such as your fungi, your viruses, your parasites, and your bacteria. We also consider your carcinogens and your pollutants as a uh, antigen that may elicit uh, immune response. And we will try to uh, discuss that one deeply uh, later in our course. Okay, so I believe that you cover already your uh, parasitology and bacteriology. How, however, your uh, mycology and virology uh, still I think uh, next semester you're gonna cover this one. So I'm not expecting you to at least, uh, you know, uh, memorize every viruses and then every fungi, but I hope that you can correlate and then link between your parasites and your bacteria into your uh, immune system or your immunology. So for example, you're, under your bacteriology, you have a lot of bacteria. Uh, in fact, in your board exam, class, we at least we need to memorize 56 clinically significant uh, bacteria that includes your Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus pneumoniae, you have your uh, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, you have your Staphylococcus uh, epidermidis, E. coli, Shigella, Klebsiella, Haemophilus, Sotomanus aeruginosa, Vibrio cholerae, you have your anaerobic one, Clostridium, you have your aerobic bacilli, Bacillus, uh, anthracis, cirrus, and a lot more. And it was actually fun, right? Covering all this bacteria, covering all this parasite. And the next step, next semester, you can complete the microbiology and parasitology, which is 20% of your board exam. Okay. And, uh, I, 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 and I think I know that the coverage of your mycology in virology is only 4% and 4% it does not actually give a great contribution because the bacteriology is around uh, ilang percent ba yung bacteriology? Kasi yung parasitology is only 30% and then the rest are under your bacteriology, fungi, and your viruses. Okay? So, ayun. Uh, these are the uh, present antigen that is floating uh, and are present in our environment that may enter or evade our human body. So how can we uh, fight against this one? This is due to our immune system. Okay, that's the main function of our immune system. And uh, throughout this course, we'll be dividing into two. And the topic will be about the innate immune response and then the uh, adaptive immune response. For the innate immune response, it takes more on the uh, immune cells okay, that can directly fight against your pathogen. And then uh, also includes your complement activation. We'll discuss that one. You, have, you also have your uh, skin. Okay, you have your primary defense, you have your normal flora, those are under your innate immune response. And those that I mentioned, class, take note, does not possess the immunological memory. Okay, compare with your adaptive immune response, okay, which is uh, basically your T cells and your uh, B cells, okay, uh, one distinctive uh, characteristic that can be different to them from your innate immune response is that 
your uh, adaptive immune response uh, possesses the immunological memory. And we will try to cover that one. And a uh, very interesting part with adaptive immune response is that we will try to learn how the B cells and T cells develop. And this is very important because the incorrect process of the ontogeny of your T cells and in your B cells can lead to autoimmune response, autoimmune diseases, and also a misfunction of your immune system against a specific uh, infectious agent. And we'll try to cover that one, okay? Slowly and slowly, plus. Okay, let's move to the definition, of course, of your immunology. Okay, immunology can be defined as the study of a host reactions. Okay, take note, okay, host reactions. Then, since we are medical laboratory scientists, so we're dealing more on the humans. Okay, so we are dealing with our human body and how, okay, how our human body reacts. Okay, when the foreign substance, for example, as mentioned earlier, you have your uh, bacteria, you have your fungi, viruses, okay, those are foreign substances that are introduced, okay, into our body, okay, so take note with this one, okay, outside the body, okay, so uh, usually we don't have a reaction unless the antigen, okay, will try to invade our human body and then as a natural response, our human body will uh, express their defense mechanism, and that is under immunology. And a foreign substance that induces such as an immune response is called the antigen. Okay, but uh, not all antigens are immunogens, but all immunogens are antigens. But we will try to discuss that one more deeply when we will go to your uh, antigen and immunogen discussion. Okay, so as a Part of that one, okay, you have your antigens or immunogens. As a general, okay, these are substances that triggers an immune response, okay? So, for example, your bacteria, okay, uh, we learn in your human anatomy that if you have a bacterial infection, your neutrophil will increase because your neutrophil has capacity to engulf your organism. Compared with your parasite, parasites are too big, so therefore your eosinophil will also increase, okay? Your neutrophil is likely increased with this one also. Okay, uh, if you have your viral infection, okay, ano yung mag increase na immune system, uh, immune cells, because you have your, correct, you have your um, lymphocytes, okay? Your monocytes will also increase if you have uh, either acute or chronic infection. And I believe that you learned this one already with your human anatomy. But in immunology, we'll try to get that basic so that we can apply that one in your immunology. Okay, so take note, class, that antigens or immunogens are substances that triggers an immune response. And sir, what are examples of antigens? Because we don't have any idea with that, with that with the term antigen. We heard this one already, but we don't know kung ano yung antigen. But basically, class, antigens are either for example, carbohydrates, proteins, DNA is the antigen also class. And when we will try to discuss in detail about the antigens, may hierarchy in sila class. Hierarchy big sabihin the lowest immunogen and then the highest immunogen. And we will try to discuss that one. Okay, so with that one, sir, you mentioned that protein is a immunogen or antigen. Uh, carbohydrates is immunogen in your antigen. So it means, sir, when we try to eat food, for example, burger, because burger, you have a patty that's contain protein, of course. You have your carbohydrates for your bread. So it means, sir, that if you eat this, that one, our immune response will react. We'll try to think about that one. Diba? And then maybe in your, in your level, because you are taking professional subjects already, we'll be thinking, ah, okay, okay lang naman siya kasi the food is digested already. However, during the digestion, there are some proteins that may escape. Okay? So therefore, paano uh, dinidistinguish ni immune system that this immune, that this antigen or immunogen is a self or non-self. And we have a term, immunologic tolerance. Okay, immunological tolerance class is the failure to mount an immune response to an antigen. This is the failure or a good thing. Why? Because hindi tayo nagre-react sa mga bagay-bagay na hindi dapat mag-react yung katawan. 
Okay? So, for example, food, then to attack the body's own proteins and other antigens. And we will try to dig this uh, immunologic tolerance when we try to discuss your T cell and your B cell ontogeny. Okay? So, uh, when we say the word ontogeny class, it's the development. Okay? So, when you try to read other books, uh, immunology and serology books, either they don't use the word development, like for example, T cell development or B cell development. Other reference books use the word ontogeny, like a B cell ontogeny, a T cell ontogeny, but it's at the same term class. Okay? Pinasosyal lang na pangalan. Okay? Ontogeny and development is still the same. Either way, you can use that one. Okay? I just want you to at least fam to, to be familiarized that aside from the development, you have your ontogeny. Okay? So let's move to the uh, this one. Okay, for your immunology again, it is a study of the men me medically related consequences that arise when this mechanism either fail, okay, or respond in an exaggerated form. Okay, and then later we are also able to we will try to cover the failure of your immune system to respond. Okay, ano yung mga, ano class, uh, what are the, for example, factors why our immune system fails to respond to these corresponding diseases. And uh, of course, since uh, more the, 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 this session is more on the introduction, I just want you to have, you know, a sneak peek. If this is a movie class, this is just a, you know, a thriller. Okay, ito yung mga, ano, uh, uh, topics that we will try to cover. Okay, this is the beauty of our immunology class. Okay, me personally, as a medical laboratory scientist, okay, uh, immunology is one of my uh, favorite subjects. Why? Because the always mentioning class that if you will try to you know memorize not, to memorize by heart the principles of our immunology, it will bridge all. Okay, it will bridge my. My, 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 uh, microbiology and parasitology, it will reach clinical chemistry and others. So I believe that, you know, you need to learn uh, the immunology serology course by heart, not just memorizing it and or, you know, for the benefit of, you know, I, I just want to pass this subject. Uh, remember class that your immunology uh, and serology is a professional course. It means that this course will appear uh, to your board exam. And for example, those students na, ah, hindi man ko mag board exam. I, I will not take board exam because after this one, I'll gonna proceed to medicine. And then, pagdating ng medicine class, you still need to cover your immunology and serology. So, if you don't have a, a, a good background of your immunology and serology, it would be very difficult, you know, to at least correlate, like for example, why the patient have this kind of uh, symptoms. And these symptoms are actually the result of your immune reaction or response. Okay, so by understanding but by heart the basic principles of your immune system and immunology class, I believe it can uh, help you uh, be more uh, you know holistic uh, as a medical laboratory scientist in the future and or a, any member of the medical field. So. Uh, also, it eliminates your non-self component such as your infectious agents, okay? So, of course, okay, ito naman yung major function ng immune system. Okay, the, the main function of your immune system is to uh, clear it out the infectious agents. As I mentioned, you have your bacteria, fungi, and your viruses. So, we learned this one already. You have the, you love this book already, class. Uh, even me, when I teach uh, diagnostic microbiology, I use the book of Mehon because uh, Connie, uh, a lot of questions from the previous board exams, na mga basic principles na microbiology, uh, I usually found it in the uh, book of Hon. So I really suggest that you start reading this one. Okay, if you don't have this one, because madami naman yung books, uh, references with your microbiology, so you can still use that one. But for me personally, I prefer Connie. And then uh, Connie mentioned already all covered uh, majority of the clinically significant uh, bacteria. 
So by memorizing that one together with the virulence factor, and then with your uh, medical parasitology with uh, Dr. Belisario, okay, he actually mentioned and covered all the medically uh, important and clinically important parasites in the Philippines. And then uh, actually class, uh, Dr. Uh, Belisario is my teacher. Uh, when I took my master's in public health at the University of the Philippines. And then he's actually a very brilliant uh, person. He visited Davao many times because, as they mentioned, that Davao or Mindanao is the fountain of parasites. So they can act, they, they usually go there and collect samples. So in my slide, so, sir, anong purpose ng slide? I just wanted to you know, show your progress that you covered right already the medical parasitology and diagnostic microbiology in your case. Uh, for those who did not still uh, get your diagnostic microbiology and you're taking this semester together with your immunology, it's a good opportunity to, you know, combine, okay, your basic knowledge of the two uh, worlds, yeah, of your microbiology and immunology. And then this one, uh, if you try to learn this one, right, for example, medical parasitology and microbiology, you always mention maybe before, ah, okay, so di na lang, ah, I will not eat pork because there's eating as all you, ah, I will not eat beef because there's eating as a janata. Ah, okay, so I'll just uh, eat egg. And then you're going to mention, ah, oh, egg is prone for uh, Sodomonas aeruginosa salmonella. I'll just eat what? I'll just eat. I'll just drink water. And water prone for your E. coli and your enterobacteria. Yeah. So it, it turns out that at the end of the course, if you will try to take your parasitology and your microbiology, and you are aware that there are a lot okay, of uh, pathogens or infectious agents, in the food and our environment that may cause infection to you, you tend to like, ah, okay, and are more cautious. Uh, is the preparation okay or not? Okay, and then now, after this one, and then you tend to like, you know, lose your weight because you're more cautious with the food. And then now, you try to cover the immunology and serology. Okay, so for example, Stevens, I'll be using Stevens and also a uh, backup of your surgeon and then you will realize that huh, this, these uh, infectious agents even they try to invade you you have your immune system to protect you have your neutrophils t cells b cells you have your nk cells you have your complementary app your antibodies diba? and then later you will try to have uh, you know you can you can memorize the complement pathway with the c with the C1 QRS, then C4, C4, B, C4, B2, A, C3 convertase, C4, B2, A, 3, B, you have your C5 convertase. Then the end of the complement lysis, and the complement activation is your cell lysis, where the bacteria will be killed. You, diba? See how your immunology is very beautiful, guys. If you will just try to love it, it would, it, it is actually very beautiful. Okay can actually cross-link every courses that we have. You can, uh, the, your, your clinical immunology and serology could become a bridge okay, for all the uh, clinical uh, subjects that we have. So again, uh, my, my, point with the, my point of the slide is that uh, if we discuss already the infectious agents, we need also to discuss how our uh, body interact or try to clear out these uh, infectious agents. So we have the term immunity, okay, that's the condition being resistant to your infection, okay? So this is the main power of our immune system, okay? This is how we are very resistant to your uh, infectious agent. And also I would like to add this up. So for example, you will try to compare yourself to going to the street, especially in the Philippines class, you, a lot of, you know, children uh, uh, in the street okay, playing, tapos din naliligo for two days and or three days. And then they don't usually get disease and or infection, but you, you actually take bath twice or thrice a day, but you still get, you know, uh, skin rash or other skin infection. Why? Why class? Diba? 
you, you, did you try to question yourself with that one why okay to answer that one glass okay so your 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 skin contains your normal flora and normal flora is part of your uh, innate immunity so if you try to you know wash your body three times diba? tapos with safeguard pa talaga it kills 99.9% of the bacteria it actually kills your normal flora allowing the uh, uh, organism outside the body to uh, lodge and then propagate and then cause infection. Okay, that's a okay a one uh, simple explanation. Yeah, but uh, I hope that your microbiology teacher can uh, you know uh, discuss that one thoroughly. And then let's move to the milestones of your uh, immunology. This is also very significant for us to learn why. Uh, of course, history, pagdating sa application in clinical as a medical laboratory scientist or you as a physician in the future, uh, I believe that this is somewhat not significant because you, can you cannot apply naman the, the history of immunology when treating the patient. Tama. So, however, uh, the problem with the board exam is that five or ten questions will be coming from the uh, history of your uh, immunology. So, we'll try to cover this one. So, let's start with the first person under the significant milestones of your immunity. So, you have your tosiditis. Okay, He first described a phenomenon where individuals who recovered okay, from a certain disease okay, rarely Okay, contracted the same disease again. Okay, this is the basic concept okay, of your immunity. Because it was uh, the uh, observed before. Na pag, for example, uh, he acquired a specific infection, it would be very less likely okay, to uh, occur again. Why? Because, uh, but although this time, well, hindi pa naman nila alam class kung ano yung function ng, ano, ng primary response to your secondary response. So it means that even the, the, the organism will try to infect it again, uh, the immune system is ready already. So the manifestation of your clinical symptoms is not manifested already. Okay? But to say that this, uh, it firstly describe a phenomenon where individuals who recover from a certain disease rarely contracted the same disease again. So those, this this is only an idea class. And then uh, let's move uh, with the role of your smallpox, okay? the development of your immunology class. Okay? Smallpox is a very uh, a milestone okay, for the uh, development of your vaccines, which is a very crucial part of your immunology. Okay, I want you to uh, have this one with your small box. Okay, although next semester, if you will try to take your uh, mycology and virology, we'll try to cover this one. Uh, your small box is under your variola. Okay, uh, minor in or major, it depends on how the virus is uh, giving a manifestation. You we're not able to observe this clinical manifestation. This one, allow me to have my laser pointer. Okay, this one. This is a clinical skin manifestation of your smallpox. Okay, uh, your smallpox was eradicated successfully in 1977. The last, uh, the last case was in Somalia. Okay, that was on 1977. Okay, uh, so we don't have spot smallpox for now okay so let's move okay for the small box as i mentioned i'll just give a short uh virology perspective for small box okay small box okay, infectious disease caused by the two variants you have your variola major and you have your variola minor okay the, the difference of the two is that uh, uh based on the uh Manifestations. For example, serious forms of smallpox. Smallpox. You have your variola major, minor for the mild form of your smallpox. Okay, so your smallpox is a DNA virus complex, and um, they're under Baltimore's classification group number uh, one class. And, and then the Baltimore's classification, we will discuss that one. But the thing that in sa mycology virology course. 
for your very all minor, I would like to mention this one. Uh, under this one, you have your colostrum, you have your cuban eats, your cotton box, you have your milk box, white box, and of course, na papanahon you have your monkey box. Okay, uh, the monkey monkey box now 2022 just uh, the, the the WHO uh, announced the global uh, epidemic warning of your monkey box. And then in the U.S. now, they are having active uh, vaccination of your smallpox. So smallpox, na smallpox class because the term smallpox was first used uh, in Europe in the 5th century to distinguish it from the great pox or you have your syphilis. Okay, and then in your microbiology, we discussed your syphilis already. You have your Trapanema pallidum, Salisbish pallidum. And then in virology, uh, in, in immunology class, although we will not uh, discuss that one in the immunological part, but we will try to cover your syphilis with your serology part. Because a lot of uh, serologic test uh, materials uh, are developed for your syphilis. Okay, this one is your the typical structure of your uh, Trapanema pallidum cell species pallidum under your electron microscope. And then uh, under your small box in my glass, you have the method variation. Okay? It's an exposure to a material coming from an unmanifested material. So for example, here, okay, this one. So kuha tayo ng lesion here from a manifested material of infection disease for smallpox okay so we get this one and for example in china okay in chinese in the uh, 1500s they developed a custom of inhalation of a powdered grass okay so from here class here they get this one they make it a powder and then they do this one the inhalation of the powdered grass from the smallpox lesion Okay. Powdered, it means that the organism is weakened already and or maybe killed. And then some of the uh, part of the virus are still active or serve as the antigen, then the immune system can be still activated. Okay, So from this one, in uh, 1500s, they do the powdered grass and then they have this one grass. Okay? So they try to introduce, this person is trying to introduce or immunize the patient okay, with a powdered grass. And also in Europe class, you have uh, Mary Montagu. Okay, they, he, uh, she introduced the variolation in Europe. However, uh, compared with the uh, Chinese uh, method class, in is that uh, she used the method of uh, insertion. Okay, they, she, she inserted the smallpox lesion under the skin. And then further refinements did not occur until the late 1700s class. Okay? Uh, 1700s pa uh, yung ano, development. And then English doctor discovered the remarkable relationship between exposure to your cowpox and the immunity to smallpox. And I, I believe that you have a hint already kung sino to class. Diba? And then uh, uh, as a short uh, background of your cowpox, okay, your, cow, your cowpox is the same with your smallpox class, but the uh, infection occurs on your cowpox. Your smallpox usually occurs in your human. Okay, so uh, an English doctor discovered a remarkable relationship between exposure to cowpox and ibig sabihin class that if human are exposed to cowpox, Okay, from the cow, and then they try to develop a weakened uh, manifestation of the disease. However, the immune system is activated. And then if, for example, the smallpox is uh, trying to infect the human uh, with the exposure of your cowpox, then the immune response is somewhat similar. Uh, the immune response produced in your cowpox have a sim similar uh, attenuation of your uh, against your smallpox, okay? And then you have your Edward Jenner. Si Edward Jenner, uh, yung na-mention ko kanina na English uh, doctor, okay, he uh, described the cross immunity. So, ibig sabihin ng cross immunity class is uh, if you're exposed to ikaw, 
and then a cow has a uh, cowpox. So you'll be infected, of course. However, cowpox, when uh, trying to infect humans, they have a less manifestation of symptoms. However, they still produce antibodies against your small against your cowpox. And then, if for example, this person who is exposed with your cowpox uh, will be infected with your smallpox, and the smallpox and your cowpox have the same, or not the same, but almost have similarities with the external structure, then therefore the antibody can still recognize this one as a cowpox. And then the antibodies will try to opsonize them. And then after optimization class, a phagocytosis will occur, activation of your B cells and B cells will occur, and then clearance will happen. Okay, so when we say cross immunity, it's a phenomenon in which exposure to one agent okay, okay, produces a protection against another agent. So uh, ayun, uh, I was able to explain, I hope that you understand about the cowpox and your smallpox. So, uh, Edward Jenner inoculated matter from a cowpox lesion to an eight-year-old boy. Okay, take note for this one, highlight this one, make 100 stars of this this one class here after James Phipps. Okay. Why? Because uh, for the past 10 years of the board exam, even with the recent one, James Phipps appeared at least eight or seven, uh, seven or eight times during the board exam. So, please take note for this one. With the uh, month and year, I just like included this one because probably maybe, for example, when you take your board exam, uh, this year is uh, will maybe will appear. Okay, there's a possibility. So at least uh, ready lang tayo guys. Okay, so yun. So that's your Edward. That, that, that is your uh, history of your uh, uh, cross immunity class described by Edward Jenner. So the boy developed a cowpox infection, okay, mild form. Then the next day, the boy gets better. And then this idea uh, from 1977 class, okay, take note with this one, okay, 1977, where uh, Edward Jenner uh, first developed the vaccine for your smallpox. Ayun. Ah, yeah, nakal nakalagay. Uh, July 1796 uh, pala, okay, Jenner inoculated with the matter from fresh Small box solution, then no disease developed. Okay, and then in 1977, again, I would like to, uh, ah, sorry, class, 1796, 1796 uh, was the first uh, development of your small box vaccine. Okay, 1977, sorry, class, I would like to uh, clarify that one I mentioned earlier with the 1977. The 1977 is the uh, last case of the small box. Okay, I apologize with the mix up of the years. And then, ta -da, that's your vaccination already. Okay, so the vaccination is the term uh, used to describe the injection of your cellular material to induce your immunity. Okay, this is the uh, work of uh, Edward Jenner class. Again, I would like to clarify myself kasi baka, baka nalito kayo class kanina sa napanggit ko. Okay, your 1977 uh, is the year where the smallpox is eradicated. And then 1796 is the year uh, where the first vaccination of your smallpox by Edward Jenner is developed. Okay, was developed. Okay, take note with that one. Then let's move to another person, class. Yeah, there, Louis Pasteur, okay, for your attenuation. I uh, will just like introduce this one because in your bacteriology, in your human anatomy, this person appeared uh, already, and I believe it was discussed. Okay, so for attenuation, it's the change or to weaken, attenuation or to attenuate, okay, to weaken. Uh, Usually, the attenuation is used for vaccinations. Like for example, you have your attenuated vaccine. Attenuated vaccine, it means that you have the whole bacteria or virus, uh, but they are not able to replicate class. Okay? So, kaya weaken sila or attenuated. Okay? The developed vaccines against uh, this one, you have your ch uh, chicken cholera. You have your rabies. 
then you have your anthrax. Okay, your cholera is a bacteria. Your anthrax also is a bacteria caused by your bacillus anthracis. Your rabies is a virus under uh, Baltimore's classification group number five class, which is a sing uh, single-stranded RNA. And then, uh, let's try to also have the two terms, you have your variation and vaccination. Okay? These two procedures were successful in decreasing smallpox mortality, okay? leading to the WHO or World Health Organization to declare the total eradication in 1979. Ayan, 1979 pala class yung ano. I would like to check this one. Kasi bakit 1979 yung ano class? Uh, here. Okay, the WHO declares a class. I would like to clarify that one with my notes. Ah, okay. So, ayun, para hindi malito kay para hindi kay malito class, in 1977 is the last case of your uh, smallpox and then the WHO uh, declared a total eradication at 1979. Okay? So, 19, 1977, Somalia was the last case. 1979, other references class uses 1980 or other resources. But for the sake of uh, your preparation in the board exam and the preparation of your quiz, so we'll use the year 1979 as the year of uh, total eradication or declaration of your WHO. Pag tinanong naman sa quiz and or sa exam class, or sa board exam, if uh, oh, what is the year uh, last case observed with your uh, smallpox, then you need to answer 1977. 1979 is the uh, year of declaration na wala na talagang uh, smallpox. And ayun, with this one class, let's move to the third person. You have Elimit Mechnikov. Okay, he actually described your phagocytosis. And then uh, with Ellie class, I like his idea start before because uh, the, the, the idea of phagocytosis class is only involved with the cell. Like for example, the neutrophil will try to directly eat up your bacteria. However, the idea of Ellie class, okay, si Ellie, in, dinescribe niya yung cellular immunity at humoral immunity with the phagocytosis. So it means that the humoral immunity can attenuate and or help the cellular immunity to have your phagocytosis. Okay, so for example, this one, ah, hindi pa pala. Later, I will show you the picture class with, uh, uh, to, to, to link your uh, cellular immunity and your humoral immunity. But uh, allow me to uh, introduce to you the word phagocytosis. It's a process of which the cells, specifically your lymphocytes, your, 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 sorry, class, your leukocytes, okay, your immune cells. Okay, take note because not all the uh, immune cells are able to, are, are capable of eating up. So we'll try to discuss that one with the immune cells separate. But uh, I believe that you know this one already because uh, you discuss it in your human anatomy. So again, it's a process of a cell, okay, which a cell is capable of engulfing or eating another cell. Okay, so ayun, with the uh, observation of Eli, uh, he was considered as a father of the whole concept of the cellular phagocytic theory of immunity. Then, uh, eto, papakita ko lang class before we'll move to Emil von Bering. So, eto yung uh, ano ni Eli class with the cellular immunity and humoral immunity. So with the humoral immunity class, so, sorry, walang I, with the humoral immunity, you have your antibodies and your antibodies will try to tag. Okay, So the, the, the neutrophil will try to find those tag organism. Okay, your antibody, yeah, yeah, your antibody will try to tag the organism. And then oh, I'm hit, I'm hit, then go on without me. Because the antibody is not, the, the, take note when there's one class, the antibody is not capable of eating up 
in or destroying the organism. Take note for that one. Walang capacity yung antibody mo to destroy the organism. Okay, their function is to tag, make an ID. Okay, so magbibigay sila ng tag or ID to the organism, making them visible to the immune cells so that your neutrophil can easily eat this up. Ayan. So yung si neutrophil, hanapin ko kung sino yung mga nakatag. Ah, nakatag na to siya. Then I will try to eat this up. And we'll try to discuss the, uh, the, the steps of her phagocytosis later uh, in our uh, uh, future discussions in my class. Okay? Then let's go back with the slide. Uh, with antibodies, kasi na mention ko na yung moral immunity here, which is antibodies. Then you have your uh, Emil von Berning and uh, Shibasoboro Kita Sato. Uh, it was on 1890s when they describe the uh, and characterize your antibodies. Antibodies are protective factors in the blood and other body fluids. Okay, so ibig sabi ibig sabi class that the antibodies is not only uh, seen on your uh, blood, but they can also be seen in your other secretions or body fluids. For example, tears tears contains antibodies, of course. It's not IgG or IgA, but it's more on the IgA. And then these antibodies are specific factors and acts only to a certain antigen. That's the reason why, class, your, your antibodies are under uh, your adaptive immunity. Kasi diba, remember in my previous slide, I mentioned that there's a two-arm under your uh, immunology. So you have your innate and then you have your adaptive. And then your adaptive are uh, capable of risk, uh, ano, more specific because they have a memory. Uh, then therefore, your antibodies are under this one because they are specific. And uh, here, the immune system okay, composed of wide array of cells, okay, soluble molecules, including your antibodies, complements, then tissues with the following characteristic. Either they have a memory, is specificity, mobility. So, it means being class, the cells are able to, you know, penetrate from into the, uh, from from your uh, blood vessels or from your blood to your endothelial cells, and then uh, replicability, and then cooperation between different cells, nor cellular products by the means of your cytokines and interleukins. We'll have a separate discussion with that one. I know madami akong ano class. Uh, what, this, this is the reason why it's a, it's more on the introduction. Okay, thriller of your ano class, uh, your your uh, immunology and serology. Because we will try to cover this one. And this is makes, you know, excited. Kasi ano, uh, very interesting yung mga topic natin class under your immunology. So I hope na ano, uh, watching this video lecture class, you appreciate the beauty of your immunology and, you know, try to read the books, try to understand. And uh, maybe, uh, uh, malav ni mo ang ano class, ang, ang immunology and it would be easier for you to understand other professional courses. And again, the primary rule uh, of your immune system is for first surveillance uh, and destruction of uh, substances that are foreign to the body and that is under your tolerance okay so with the surveillance so your immune system uh, your immune cells will try to go to the different circulation part of your body so they will try to check if kung merong foreign foreign substances or bacteria like this one and then they will try to destroy okay and of substances that are foreign to the body okay and uh, so again, as I mentioned it earlier, you have a, a, the, the, the immune system is uh, divided into two arms. So you have your innate immunity and you have your adaptive immunity. So to end class with this one, uh, sorry, wait lang class. Okay, I forgot to plug my uh, computer. I have almost 5%. Okay, I'm okay already, class. So, 
Yes, this is my last slide already. And then I want you to have, uh, to understand this one. Okay, for example, this is very funny class, like uh, the T cells, okay, B cells over here, I found them. And then the B cells, oh God, uh, which antibody do I use? I've never seen this one before. And then, the, of course, the virus will be a yeah, new narc. I thought we were friends. Yeah, because your T cells uh, will try to present your antigen, uh, your, your your virus to your B cells, and your B cells will try to produce the specific antibodies to tag this one and then to engulf, to eat up. Although your B cells is a EPC or uh, uh, antigen presenting cells, but they are that 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 is not their main function class. So either the macrophage dendritic cells will try to uh, clear this up. So ayun, uh, this is the end of my discussion. I hope that you know I trigger something in your hearts that uh, throughout this semester, along with uh, uh, my other co-professors, we'll try to discuss the different parts of your immunology and serology so you can get, uh, I know, uh, it's not more on the learning, but it's more fun class. Yeah. So uh, I know that, you know, immunology and serology is very difficult, specifically your immunology, because we cannot observe things. Like we cannot yeah, see in the microscope the antibodies. That's the reason why students have difficulty understanding uh, those courses that hindi natin siya na observe, compared like your parasitology, your bacteriology. It's easy to digest. Why? Because you can easily see that one in the microscope. And then we just like correlate the virulence factor and then the clinical manifestation. But in immunology class, sadly, we cannot, okay, like for example, observe the antibodies, the complement activation. Uh, we cannot actually see that one unless you have your electron microscope. But uh, however, uh, like for example, immune cells, you can see that one in your, for example, in your hematology. So ayun, I will not hold you long. I hope that you understand something and catch something with my uh, session. And then uh, thank you very much for uh, listening. And see you on the next uh, video lecture session that we will uh, discuss with your emergency room. Bye, class. Thank you. Thank you, class.